Welcome to this video. We are going to learn some tricks for solving circuit problems. Here's a battery connected by wires to a resistor. When we draw this battery in our circuit diagrams, we don't draw a battery shape. We show this. We use two lines representing the two terminals. The long line is where batteries have high potential energy. The shorter line is where batteries don't have any potential energy. We draw the resistor as just a box, and instead of putting negative 10 as the potential difference, we just write 10, and it's understood that resistors take away potential difference. This is an arrangement of three resistors that are in series. We say that these are in series because charge only has one path through these resistors. All of the charge is forced through the first resistor, then forced through the second, and then forced through the third. Charge can't split off at any point. On the other hand, there are parallel resistors. Those look like this, and like this, and like this. In each case, every single one of these, charge comes down the wire, and then it splits off at a junction and it passes through three different paths, or branches. So we've got a top branch, a middle branch, and a bottom branch. And that's true here, too. There's a top branch. Some of the charge goes through the top, some goes through the middle, some charge goes through the bottom branch, and likewise here. So these are called parallel. Cell is another term for battery. Whenever you have cells or batteries in series, so there's only one path, between these that charge could follow. What do we do? You simply add up all of the EMFs, and the total supplied voltage here is 6 volts. By the way, voltage is a synonym for potential difference. Whenever you have resistors in series, like this, the rule is the same. You add up the individual resistances to get the total resistance of that branch. So here you would add 4 plus 4 plus 4, 12 ohms. Here's the rule for resistors in parallel. We have three parallel branches where current can split off, and then right here, all of the current comes back together. Here's the rule. Let's call this top R1, the next resistor is R2, and the bottom resistor is R3. This is the formula for the total resistance. We're adding the inverses. Let's solve this problem. Each R value is 6. You combine the right side, and then you can't forget to take the inverse to get your final answer of 2. It's really common to put down the final answer as 0.5, but that's not our total. There's a trick. Whenever you have two branches with equal resistance, the top and bottom branches each have 6 ohms. The total is half the resistance of each branch, like this. You can re replace this uh, branch with a single resistor having half the resistance of each individual arm or branch. The math always works out for this to be true. Kirchhoff's first law is about junctions. A junction is a point where current can branch off into one or more branch, uh, two or more branches. The sum of the current entering a junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. Let's write that equation. I1 enters this junction. I2 and 3 leave it. What if you have something like this? In this case, I1, I2, and all I3 all enter the junction, and nothing leaves. So that's our equation. In series, current is equal through all resistors. If you have 0.3 amps coming through the first resistor, then all of that charge has to go through the second resistor. There's nowhere else for it to go, and likewise. In parallel, 
you have, when you have different branches, you apply Kirchhoff's first law. Let's say 0.6 amps comes into the junction. This junction right here, we will pretend serves for this path, the second path, and the bottom path. All three branches originate at this junction. So if you have equal resistance, then 0.2 amps will split off here, 0.2 for each branch. And then over on this side, they all come back together again, and you get 0.6 amps once more. That's if the resistances are all the same. When you have different resistance in the three branches, the current is not shared evenly. So for example, you could have the most on the top branch and the least amount in the middle branch, just as an example. Now, which of these resistors do you think has the highest resistance? The answer is the middle branch because that's where the current is lowest. And this branch draws the most current, it lets the most current through because it must have the smallest resistance. On the other side, all three uh, branches join back up, and so the total current has to add together to get 0.6 once more. Kirchhoff's second law is about potential difference. The sum of EMFs in any closed loop of a circuit equals the sum of the potential differences dissipated in that loop. Let's take a case where you've got an EMF of 10 volts, and let's say each, re each resistor dissipates 5 volts. We're going to test out Kirchhoff's second law. If you go around this loop, follow my, my cursor here, the EMF supplied is 10, and the total potential difference dissipated is 5 plus 5, or 10. So in that closed loop, we follow Kirchhoff's second law. And it's true for every loop. In this case, the resistance is equal for both. In this case, the resistance is not equal. When you're moving along in series, the bigger resistor takes up more of the EMF. Let's apply Kirchhoff's second law to parallel resistors. You take a single loop, and when you choose a loop, you have to ignore one of the parallel branches. And so you just pretend it's not there. Here's how you can do this. Some charge follows the loop that I've just shown in red. Those charges start with 6 joules per coulomb. That's how much energy they have at the start. And then they have to lose all 6 joules per coulomb by the time they get back to the battery. And that's what Kirchhoff's second law says, is that the total energy has to be conserved per coulomb. So where do these charges lose their 6 joules per coulomb? It's dissipated right here in this resistor. So the resistor has 6 volts of the potential difference. Let's do the same thing for this larger loop with the other branch. Charge starts with 6 joules per coulomb, and the charge, which I'm tracking, doesn't take this top branch. It follows this bottom branch. And then it goes where my cursor is, and it comes back to the battery. When we have 6 volts supplied, you have to dissipate all 6 volts. The EMFs equal the potential difference. So there's only one resistor, and therefore it must dissipate all 6 volts of the EMF. And look at what we have. In parallel branches, you have equal voltage, equal potential difference, across the two branches. That's another rule we can think about. That's true even when the resistance is not equal in the two branches. In this loop, 4 volts is supplied, therefore the potential difference is 4. In this loop, 4 volts of EMF is supplied, so the potential difference that's dropped or dissipated has to be 4. So these parallel branches dissipate the exact same voltage or potential difference even though they have different resistance.